I keep like touching my hair. Hey, my name is Elise and this is the closest I've ever zoomed into my face in a YouTube video. Welcome to my face. Because we're in such close proximity today, I thought I'd also talk about something that's close to my heart. I want to talk about how I've been feeling for the past few weeks and how I've been feeling for the past year living back home in San Francisco and to just be real with you. About a year ago after graduating from Berklee College of Music in Boston, I moved back home to San Francisco. And it has been quite a tumultuous time. This interim period has been marked by uncertainty, doubts, heartbreak, lots of it, crying, and finally, discernment. I've known since I graduated that I wanted to move to LA, so why is it taking this damn long? Ultimately, I don't think I felt ready. There were people that I cared about, there were mental blocks I put up myself because I felt so safe at home, and there's the fact that despite having the privilege to travel so much in my life so far, San Francisco remains the most beautiful city in the world. In my in my track record as a friend, I've always stood by the quote that there's no such thing as being busy, it's about prioritizing the people that matter. I have a habit of pouring myself into the people I care about. I think I'm this way because I've been hurt in many friendships where the other person has stopped trying, so I swore to myself I would never be that person. Ever. If a relationship platonic or romantic blew up in my face, I would be the last one to call it quits. Starting from the end of high school, I traveled a lot. I took a gap year in Taiwan to compete in a televised singing competition, and each winter and summer break of college, I was out doing something, like traveling to Asia, trying out for The Voice of China, competing in another Taiwanese singing competition, etc, etc, etc. Maintaining friendships, maintaining relationships, maintaining anything was hard. Coming back home to San Francisco, everything felt different. I was in one place for a long period of time, and I wasn't rushing off to another place, another country, another continent. And low-key, I honestly didn't really know what to do with myself. I love San Francisco, but coming back to live here after five years, a lot has changed. If you're a 20-something person like myself, you probably work for tech in some way, shape, or form. Unfortunately, my skill set does not provide for any possible work in tech. So I began feeling like what I do and what I can do was insignificant. I felt like I wasn't contributing to the society I was living in because honestly, what can I contribute to San Francisco? There's not a lot of space for art or anything for that matter to thrive. I started thinking very negatively about myself and at this point I poured myself into other people because I didn't think what I was doing was worth anybody's time. I began to invalidate my own talents and abilities. Just because you're not doing what everyone else is doing doesn't mean you're invalid or you can't offer anything. It was very dangerous for me to think this way because measuring myself in the validation of making a lot of money or gaining others' approval warped my own sense of self. I know as artists in general, we already doubt ourselves more than the usual person. And being surrounded by the current job climate in San Francisco wasn't helping either. There are no blueprints for our job paths, there's no right way to achieve what we want, and choosing to be an artist comes with a lot of uncertainty. I feel like only recently have I gotten to a point where I feel ready. Well, ready as I'll ever be, I already have a place lined up in LA. Half of me feels completely broken, but the other half of me feels like I'm on the cusp of something really new and exciting. As a 20 three year old, I think this is an okay feeling to have. There are a lot of things I'm still trying to figure out about myself and my artistry has been evolving and ever changing. Honestly, it took me forever to even start making YouTube videos because I kept thinking, who's gonna care? No one's even gonna watch, so what's the point? And tangentially, with my songwriting, I felt like everything I wrote sucked and that nothing was good enough, so I might as well stop. But I realized if I don't put myself out there, people really aren't gonna care because there will be nothing to care about. Literally, there wouldn't be anything to to see about me. And if I try and get nowhere, at least I can say that I tried and I can try again. I tried to align my views on friendship with my own sense of self, which I probably should have been doing this whole time. I'm dumb. It took some convincing from friends and a lot of positive support to even get me to the step of trying to navigate the current YouTube and social media climate because there are so many social medias. How do I social? After getting out of my own head, I've written a lot of songs recently and I realized I actually do have a lot to say. There will be new music coming. It's just a matter of when. I have a lot of feelings. <laughs> so getting to the title of this video, why am I moving to LA? I want to pursue a career as a performer and songwriter to its fullest extent and there are just so many more opportunities in LA than here in San Francisco. LA is close enough to come back and visit because I love my mom and my family very much. In the past year I visited LA three times and all three times I felt like this was somewhere I could totally live. Final words, I was on a phone call with someone I really care about and I expressed how terrified I was of this move. But I realized that if I stay complacent and safe, I won't be growing. Now's the time to do the thing! I'm still on this journey trying to figure everything out and 
I know it'll get hard. It's been really, really hard recently and I haven't been in the most positive headspace, but I just have to keep pushing through. I've sunk into very low points in the past year and honestly, I don't think I can get any lower. There's nowhere to go but up, or in this case, down south. Thank you.